Hey everyone, it's uh, Andrew and Nick from OnePlus Armor, and today we're going to go over the Lore of Undeath from the new Nagash campaign. So we got the book here. Pretty sexy. It's uh, definitely a good read if you're into any of the fluff, or even if you're not into the fluff, I would definitely check it out. Yeah, it's a solid read. Uh, we were both ripping through it, pretty excited for what we've been seeing. Yeah, yeah. So let's just get into this. So the Lore of Undeath is a new lore that came out with uh, this supplement. It's basically sort of uh, mainly a summoning lore, which is a new type of spell that uh, lets you bring new units into the game and play around with. Uh, one of the cool things about this lore, though, it's not just for the Undead Legion. Any, any wizard in the game can take it, so you're probably going to be seeing some cool combos, like different armies bring in Undead units as well. Have that true necromancer in your army, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, Nick, did you want to go over just like what summoning spells are? Uh, that's the new that's the new spell type that came out with this. Yeah, so summoning spells are, like Andrew said, a new type of spell. And it essentially allows the caster to place a new unit under uh, you know, owning player caster's command on the battlefield. The spell will specify what type of unit is summoned and how many points worth of models it can have. So that's different than what we traditionally see where it's number of models. This one, in fact, is now the number of points. Yeah. Um, so then they, these units become summoned units. Uh, summoned units can be upgraded to include uh, any options listed in their army list entries, but they have to adhere to their minimum unit size as normal. They can deploy wholly within the spell's range and at least one inch away from all units, buildings, and impassable terrain. A unit can be placed facing any direction and any legal formation. It does not need to be deployed uh, in the caster's line of sight or forward arc. If it is summoned and it's more than five models though, it does have to have a front rank of at least five models wide, so you can't start off the bat conga lining these guys. No, that, which is good. Yeah, which is definitely good. I've seen some dirty tricks uh, happening. The vampires, at least. Logan. Logan. Yeah, Logan's the worst. <laughs> Actually, the time he played against me, he screwed himself and blocked his own charge. Well, good. Yeah, so that worked. Some units cannot be dispelled and do not award victory points under any circumstances and I think that's what the area of contention is right now is that the, if you have a summoned unit on the battlefield it won't award you any victory points if you kill it. Yeah. Um, if you can't, for one reason or another, deploy it within those rules um, then it doesn't enter play and, but you still benefit from the Lord's attribute. Right, so we'll go over the attribute. Uh... So what that does is, uh, anytime you cast a spell from the Lore of Undeath, place a raised dead counter, so just whatever you got, on the battlefield each time uh, a spell is successfully cast. Uh, any friendly wizard that subsequently casts a summoning spell from the Lore of Undeath can choose to expend one or more of your counters after they have cast their spell. For each counter expended in this way, uh, you increase the points worth of model summoned by 10 points. So, for example, if you have two counters down and you summon a unit worth 100 points, then that unit would be worth 120 if you use those counters. So you can put uh, 120 points worth of models now. Correct. On the, uh, on the table. <clears throat> Alright, so like the classical spell selection, we have the signature spells and six uh, spells which grow in terms of uh, how strong or powerful they are and their casting costs. So I'll start with the uh, the signature. Um, so this is basically uh, Rise, the Grave Call. It's a summoning spell, of course. It has a range of 12 inches. Uh, the caster summons a single unit of infantry worth up to 50 points selected from the Undead Legion's army list, page 20. So to use this Lore of Undeath, um, you'll need the well, you don't need the cards, but you'll definitely need the Nagash book. Um, and uh, what you can do is you, like a lot of spells, upgrade the spell. And you can choose to summon a single in unit of infantry worth, to a, worth up to 100 points on a 14+. plus. The other one was a 9+. plus. Uh, and lastly, you can choose to summon 150 points worth of models at, uh, a, value, at a casting value of 16+. plus. Um, I was going to say something here, but I completely forgot. Oh yeah, again, remember that this is points worth of models and not number of models per se, and, and it's infantry, so it specifies specifically 
what type of unit that you can cast. So this one's infantry only. This one's infantry, and the upped version is monstrous infantry, 450 points. Oh, I didn't read that. Monstrous infantry. Yeah, so okay, now you can start uh, uh, rolling in what would be Vargolfs. Are they... Uh, Vargolfs, I think. Uh, or Vargais, or what are they called? Uh, I think the Vargolf is the big one, and the Vargais are the small ones. Oh, okay. Uh, but that also includes Ushapti from the Tomb Kings, uh, the Crypt Ghouls, or the Crypt Horrors from uh, Vampire Counts. Uh, maybe even those new Mor Morgals, or what are they called? Uh, the Mor Morgeists? Morgeists. The new Monstrous Infantry for this uh, for the Undead Legions. Yeah, we're, we're flipping to the page here. Morgasts. Morgasts. So, so we'll just show you a picture. So it's, it's, these bad boys here. They're actually not released yet, but they are the new uh, monstrous infantry unit for uh, the Undead Legion. So this spell would allow you to summon these guys as well. So that's not too bad, and uh, they're pretty beefy. Yeah, they are pretty beefy. It's definitely not bad for a signature uh, uh, signature cast for sure. All right, so Andrew. So I'll go into the first spell. So it's a. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Morcon, the Breath of Darkness. So this casts on a 6+. plus. Uh, this is an augment spell that targets one friendly unit with the undead special rule that is within 12 inches of the caster. This unit immediately regains up to d3 plus 1 wounds worth of models as described in the Resurrecting Fallen Warriors on page 19 of the Big Red Rulebook. Uh, in addition, unless this unit is engaged in combat, it can also make a normal move as if it were the remaining move subphase. So this is basically uh, just like the lore attribute for the Tomb King's lore and uh, like Ray's Dead for Vampire Counts, it just brings back dead models. Uh, yeah, useful. It is, and it's the only one there that uh, that doesn't specify points per se. So I guess your lore attribute wouldn't count in this instance either. But that's kind of nice if you're like summoning uh, monstrous infantry or terror geists or whatnot. Uh, so that you can just keep them alive. Yeah, so, yeah. Basically, that's what it's good for. Or, if you are using Undead Legions, you're going to have, st you know, Undead stuff you want to bring back anyways. That's the spell that's going to help you out. Yeah, that's not too bad. Alright, the second spell is called, oh my god, Solekim? Solekim? I don't know. The Hand of Dust. Uh, it's cast on a 7+. plus. It's an augment spell, and it's cast on the wizard. In close combat, the caster can choose to exchange all his normal attacks to make a single-handed dust attack against enemy model in base contact. If he uh, succeeds in rolling to hit, the target model suffers a wound with the multiple wounds D6 special rule with no armor saves allowed. Uh, if the Hand of Dust slays an enemy character in a challenge, you immediately gain an additional d6 raise the dead counters. Yeah. So, um, you know, it might not be too often that this comes into play, because hopefully you're not putting your Necromancer head first into combat, but it definitely could be an, a good oh shit spell if that were to happen, or... Yeah, and it... It doesn't have to be in a challenge to use the spell itself. So while you do get the bonus for slaying a character in close combat to get those extra uh, raised dead counters, you still get that attack that ignores armor saves and does multiple wounds d6. So, Not bad against monsters for yeah. sure. So if a monster hits, like say, I don't know, your wizard bunker and your wizard's there, chances are he'll probably hit and... You know, multiple wounds D6 is a big punch, especially when it ignores armor. Basically like punching the monster in the nuts. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just call that the Sacker spell. The Sacker spell, yeah. So I guess I'll do the next one. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I did that one. Yeah, so number three is, Jesus, uh, Kizar the Soul Eater. Stealer. Stealer, sorry. Uh, this is a direct damage spell with a range of 12. Uh, roll 2d6 plus 2 for each point the result uh, for each point the result exceeds the target's leadership that target suffers one wound with no armor saves allowed if this spell causes at least one unsaved wound you immediately gain d3 raise dead counters so that's kind of a trade for the signature spell I would think uh, you mean the lore attribute no no I would I don't know if you'd keep this one out of all the other spells in there if you roll that well, it's pretty good because it's it's essentially uh, the casket of 
Souls' spell as well, right? Oh, is that what the casket does? Yeah, it's fairly similar. So, you know, you roll 2d6 plus 2. On average, it's a 9. All right, and if that exceeds your target's leadership, they suffer wounds with no armor save. So stuff like Ogre Mornfang, which is only leadership 7, yeah. you know, that can, that can pick off 1 or 2. And as long as you do a wound with this, you get an additional d3 raised dead counters. So I assume you get the one for casting it uh, as lore attribute, and then you get additional d3 so you can get up to four raised dead counters. Uh, I would interpret that as well, like that, yeah. Because it says additional as, as yeah. opposed to instead of. So For sure. It, it might be a good way to get those raised dead counters up to then follow up with a summoning spell and get extra points there, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, the fourth one called Razkar, the Abyssal Swarm. That one's cast on a 10 plus. Of course, it's a summoning spell with a range of 12 inches. The caster summons a single unit of war beasts or swarms, up to 75 points selected from the Undead Legions. Uh, instead, you can choose to summon, uh, summon a single unit of monstrous beasts worth up to 150 points uh, at a 16 plus. So, like, as we had mentioned earlier, now things are starting to get a little, uh, little crazy where yeah. you can start summoning bigger and uh, badder things. And, you know, you may think 75 points and 150 points is not so much to start with, but if you're sitting on, a you know, 10 counters, yeah. then it's 175 points or 250 points, so then things get real pretty quick. Yeah, and it's also good, like, uh, I know a lot of the vampire guys like to bring uh, the dire wolves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this would be a nice way to get, you know, a quick, easy, oh, small yeah. unit of five as chaff just to throw out. Well, especially if you need to block things off or redirect in a pinch. Yeah, for sure. They're, they're perfect for that. Uh, so we'll go to the next one. The f number five spell is Kandarak, the Harbinger. Uh, so this is also a summoning spell. It casts on a 10 and has a range of 12. Uh, the caster summons a single character worth up to 65 points. Uh, selected from the Undead, Undead Legions list, uh, the caster can instead choose to summon a unit consisting of a single monster, chariot, or war machine worth up to 200 points, in which case the casting value is increased to 24. This is the spell I think I have the most issue with in this lore. This is why I don't think it should be tournament legal. Um, we can do a short blurb about that later, but yeah. We'll do that at the end. We'll talk about it, but yeah. So basically, but the distinction here, you got to, um, so when you do the original cast on 10 plus, it's a single character worth up to 65, but if you do the 24 plus, it's 200 points of War Machine, Single Monster, Chariot, so that's not 200 points of character, so you're kind of choosing Correct. one or the other, so it's not like Blender <clears throat> Lord showing up, but, you know, if you had 10, like say you had 10 counters sitting, it's still 165 point vampire, I don't know if... You know, that's a good vampire, bad vampire, I, you know. I'm sure you can figure a way to make it good, but that's also a free wizard. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that. Now it's going to, if you can just make yourself a new necromancer. Exactly. Um, you know, if you're playing undead, that's free banshees, and no one likes to fight those guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, chariot war machine. Oh, okay. Yeah, banshee. And then, yeah, if you do the buff version, uh, I'm just going to take a quick look here. To make sure it's on the list, but I'm pretty sure it is. What? Yeah. So with this spell, you can summon yourself Casket of Souls. <laughs> uh, that that's sort of where my issue comes in. It's like you start getting the stuff that is really hard to get in your list to begin with, and now you're just getting it with a free spell. And then if they manage to kill it, it doesn't just, matter. You get an, yeah. So you get a casket of souls that kills a bunch of stuff, and then when you actually kill it, it's worth no points anyways. Like yeah. or a terror guys. A terror guys. Now you can just jump your terror guys to nuke what you want, and you don't really care if it gets shot up. Exactly. Uh, so we can go with the last spell. <laughs> okay, the last spell is Akararan, Akararan, the Dark Riders, cast on a sixteen plus. Dark Rise is a summoning spell with a range of 12. The caster summons a single unit of cavalry, monstrous cavalry, or chariots worth up to 150 points selected from Undead Legions. So, I, you know, this doesn't really matter too much. It would seem to me that the number 5 should have been number 6. Yeah. And vice, but, you know, whatever. Um, 
This I don't like either because I hate hex wraiths and it's almost like, oh, I have hex wraiths. Yes, yeah. new unit of hex wraiths. Here's a new unit of hex wraiths. So now they're just running up and down your lines, murdering things that you can't deal with. If you're like me and like especially for lizards players, you're not often taking magic weapons because great weapons are better most often, you know, so. Yeah, so I think my problem with this lore is it gives you access to units that usually when you're building your list, you're trying to find ways to fit in. Mm -hmm. Whereas now you can just make your list and not really care about, you know, the dance of trying to fit what units you need. You can just take whatever you want and then whatever you can't fit in your list, you start summoning. Yeah. So, you know, someone might go cavalry heavy and then need infantry but can't fit in their list, they'll just summon a bunch. Yeah. Another another list can do something different but summon a bunch of war machines. Uh, the number five spell allows you to summon Screaming Skull Catapults, uh, the Casket of Souls, Terror Geists, um, what other big things? Sphinxes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Tomb King's uh, Hero Titan, which gives you your wizards even more power when they cast, like, that's the type of stuff that people shake around their list to try to fit in, and now they get it for free with spells. Like, this is a fun lore, and I can see it being a lot of fun when we play our campaign, but I just don't see it being fair for tournaments, because well, a big part of that is list building and making that perfect list, and this sort of takes you away from that. All right, well, let's do a real sit-down discussion here and give our different points. Short sit-down, and then we'll give our points, and then you guys can make your decision on what you think is going to happen. All right, guys, we're back. So, uh, like we mentioned, we're looking at uh, the Nagash campaign supplement or campaign book, yep. uh, Lore of Undeath, and I think we're just going to do a quick sit down and talk about this lore of undeath and what we think it kind of means for Warhammer Fantasy. So maybe we can first talk about, Andrew, what we think it means for Beer Hammer. Type of games, you're playing with your buddy, like we've been talking a lot, we've been getting a little stressed on the tournament stuff, and we just want to go back to the good old roots of just playing Warhammer and having a good time and, you know, taking what you like and not, not necessarily uh, list tailoring. So what do you think? I think this will be great for Beer Hammer. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's super fun. There's a lot of cool things you can do. Uh, like I said, you know, you can have your, your Empire Army with a Necromancer in there, you know, buffing them up with undead and zombies and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fluff wise, it just would be awesome. Like, just, uh, you know, play campaigns with your buddies yeah. or just for sure. and stuff left, right, and center. And uh, you can even do games where it's, you know, one guy has a light council and the other guy's. Doing lore of undeath, doing yeah. these little, that's kind of neat. I really, I really like that. It adds new element to you know your regular Warhammer games and stuff. Yeah, it really you know it changes things. It, it's something different that none of the other lores have. Like obviously, there's that new spell type summoning, so it does give you the option to bring in new units and sort of do themey games. Yeah, and you don't have to be uh, you know, vampire counts or tomb kings, you know, you could be a uh, lizard men, uh, you can be, like I said, empire, so, yeah, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Now I think the more contentious one is tournaments. Yeah, I don't think this will fit for tournaments. Yeah. Um, and, and why? Because you think the, being able to bring new units that, you know, you normally have to work hard to put into your list. Yeah, like, I don't have a problem with summoning the new units until the last two spells mm -hmm. because those are the spells that give you all the rare slots, all the all the heavy cavalry, all the stuff that usually is a linchpin for your army to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've seen guys who run Tomb Kings and the base of their army is a big block of Black Knights. You know, that that's as the lynch... As Vampire Counts. As Vampire Counts, sorry, is that what I said? Yeah. Um, that, that's something that they've, you know, sh changed and worked their list into is having that main unit be the thing for their army. Now you can get one for free. Like, that just seems... Yeah, but you gotta imagine, though, for example, say you were to do that, you get 20, it's cast on a 24 plus, and... Six dice it. So, yeah, you six dice it, but then you run the risk of miscasting your wizard, right? And you're throwing six dice at it. Like... How often in a game are you getting a 24 plus spell on? Like for me, most of the time I'm 
you know, and I try. God knows that's my only strategy, six days in fire combo vacation, and I usually only get it off once if I do get it off in a game. You know, maybe, well, there's obviously much better players than I am, but I'm just saying, like, how often would that actually happen? And then, like, if you want that Terror Geist, like, I don't know how many points Terror Geist is, like 235 or 250 or something, something like that. 285. So you would at least need about three, four, five counters banked this to cast to get a Terror Geist. Okay, but for every spell you cast, you get a counter, right? Yeah, but it's assuming they're not dispelled. Okay, fair enough. But if you start casting some of these low casting ones that aren't really do much, and yeah. you get those counters banked, if you're a Vampire Counts player and your Terror Geist died turn two, turn four, you got, you got a new one back that's worth no points. And it's at that point in the game when stuff is dying, and you, maybe that guy lost his cannon, so maybe the thing that killed the Terror Geist the first time is gone, and that was the only way he could have done it. Yeah. Yeah, but you gotta look at the, the, this whole lore lore is all basically summoning other than what I think is kind of a weak magic missile or is it direct damage one a range of 12 inches so buddy has to be in your face at this point and most things can charge into you before they get within 12 inch range so you know like that's pretty pathetic your, <laughs> your augment so the what is it the one that's hand of dust like, to me, if you're wizard, you need this, because if you're wizards in combat, if you don't get this off, he's being chewed up and spit out. So, yeah, that's kind of cool, but it's just kind of one creature, or one model in your whole army. So the rest that's really meaningful is the summoning stuff. So that's your whole game plan, is summoning. You don't have, like, you know, buffs, like you're not Wysans, you're Saurus, you're not, um, you know, what is it, Speed of Light anything. Uh, soul of Stone, or is, what is it, the one where you give them plus four toughness if you have the, the, um, the life. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, Throne of Vines and then... Flesh to Stone. Flesh to Stone, you know, so, yeah, I think it's powerful. And you got to imagine, too, like, maybe in our minds we're thinking they go anywhere, but this is range 12, range 12, range 12, so they ba basically have to be near your caster. So it's not like a terror guy's showing up behind enemy lines. It can. Well, you know what, if Buddy has a Necromancer behind his enemy lines, he deserves that Terror Geist. Thing. No, but what I'm saying is, if your unit's already locked in combat, you can su you can summon stuff while you're in combat. Uh, so maybe that Blender Lord who took Undeath, he's having no problems slicing away at things, and now he's summoning Terror Geist behind, uh, behind the and unit that terror he's guys, killing. Terror Geist are the ones who can scream into combat, right? Yeah. So yeah. all of a sudden, something big bad heavily armored hits your lines and your necromancer's like well what am I going to do terror guy's behind he screams right in so saves the day it should have been this minus the terror guys <laughs> it's not just terror guys though yeah, it, yeah. it also like one of I'm sure we're going to see allies come anyways so maybe I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to rally too hard against this but yeah I, I honestly don't want certain allies, armies are going to fill in the gaps that they're they don't have so, I have Chaos Dwarves, you know that. Um, one of the big things with that army is everything's wicked expensive, so you don't have a lot of it. I might have, like, just a regular dwarf gun line, but barely any foot troops. All of a sudden, I'm going to start summoning huge blocks of skeletons and zombies and stuff, and it's going to offset that weakness in my army. Um, another army, say, I don't know, what's one that doesn't have a lot of artillery? Lizard, lizard men. Lizard men. All of a sudden you start pulling out... Dwarf cannons. Yes, I would. Well, no, but you start bringing out... Uh, oh, yeah. Screaming is called catapults. Yeah, that's what The I casket think. of souls to give you way better magic phases than you already have. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Hero Titan. A hero Titan there to give you D3 for every casting. Like, that's, yeah, it, that's it, the it, stuff that I think will Well, it changed, but everybody... Yeah, but everybody has that option, right? So how broken is it if everybody has that option? It would change virtually how we play the game, but would it necessarily break, would necessarily make Undead Legions or this lore broken? Because if you're running it and I'm running it... That's boring. Yeah, well that's true do you, too. Do you want to roll up to every opponent and be like, what did you take today? Oh, Lore of Undeath. Me too. But and then that, that's how like every that's, game will I'd go. I'd be that superior guy that went in there. No, I took high magic. F you. You know. 
and then you lose because and I got twenty nil. Yeah, you got twenty nil because the other guy brought on death and won his game because yeah, there's of only it. so many fiery convocations you can get off in the game. <laughs> <laughs> but when you do, it's sweet. It's so sweet. <laughs> oh man. All right, so I think we're a little. Um, I think we're a little divided here. I kind of would like to see it tried at least. I'm not saying everybody, sh uh, every tournament organizer out there should say undead legions and yeah, for and sure, like death. But one, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, uh, this might be a knee jerk reaction on my part, just because it is so fundamentally different than what we've seen before. And give it some time, and maybe we will see that it isn't as over the top as it is. Right now, though, at, like first glance, first impression, I think this is. This is great for like home play, having fun, beer hammer. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It it has tons of theme and like personality behind it. I just don't think it's gonna be good for tournaments. I think it's gonna either make everything bland because everyone's gonna take it, or it's gonna yeah. break armies. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I think I'm a bit on the other side where I just think it's gonna shake things up, and so now people will have to start taking different lists where they're not, you know. It's still going to be taking the net lists anymore, and uh, now they're going to have to consider this. Well, what if Buddy has Lore of Undeath? And then that might also then change the meta. So I think maybe at first people start taking Undeath all the time, but maybe eventually people start figuring out what the best counter is for it, and then Undeath won't be that big thing anymore. Like, I think just naturally everything sh uh, you know, shifts according to what people bring. But, of course, you know, who knows? I, what I do know is, regardless of what we think, if you guys read the fluff in this, the this is worth picking up just to read this. Yeah, I was really surprised. And this lore really supports like what's going on in, in oh, the yeah. story itself. Like, yeah, if you read this, you're like, oh, that's that spell he cast. Yeah. If you you know, that's this thing. Um, I honestly hadn't. Um, I know we're kind of diverging a little on the topic, but I I I didn't know what to expect when I picked this up. Kind of just went blind and found the rule book and then found this book and I've been reading it about a third of the way through and it's pretty sweet. Um, it's not just kind of garbage reading that you may expect with a game per se. It's actually quite interesting. So I don't know if you're a big fan of the yeah the what do you call them? The What's fluff? It? The fluff, but even fantasy type novels you'd you'd quite enjoy this and my point for this is that regardless of what we think, this is kind of foreshadowing a big change in my mind. Yeah. So we might have to get used to some changes regardless of what you or I think. Yeah, like I can, as much as I'm against this lore for tournament play, um, I can see when the new edition rolls around, this is the ninth lore. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just going to be rolled into the rule book. Yep. It's going to be like, F you, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. You're using it regardless, people. So yeah, exactly. So then, on that topic, just quickly, tournaments, undead legions. I think it's fine if you don't use uh, the campaign system of making your army. So in the campaign, uh, it allows you to take up to fifty percent lords and fifty percent heroes. Uh, that supports the fluff because it is a lot of you know here's the big bad character and his posse of other big bad characters, mm. and we got our army together and we're going to fight. That's cool for like the campaign thing, but you know, we're all used to the the twenty five percent lords and heroes and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if you apply the regular method of making your army to the undead legions, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes Nagash out because he's a thousand points. Yeah, yeah, any of the Mortarks are out. Most of the Mortarks are out unless you're playing three thousand points. I think. Yeah, if you're like doing the Adepticon big battle, you could start fitting um, Manfred, Arcan, and Neferata. But at that point, I don't think they're as overpowered. Yeah, because at that point everyone else has big bats as well, right? So well, and your it, high elf farm is going to have like six bolt cores, exactly. so you're not really that worried anymore. And But I think before that you can have the other ones like Krell and Krom. Right, they're sort of more um, hero level guys. Though, right? uh, so yeah, they're not as powerful, but they're still good. And those those characters exist anyways in the other books. For yeah. The most part. I, I don't know if they how much they change really, yeah, because Krell's two fifty. Yeah. Uh Vlad is five hundred, so he's not cheap, but he's fit him. And at the same time, you know, Vlad he's a good character, but at the same price you're getting a de the the kitted out demon prince, and I think the demon prince is a better buy than a five hundred point Vlad. Yeah, yeah. I looked at him and I wasn't 
like it didn't shock to me like it wasn't to me like oh my god yeah. like he's a cool character he's got some cool abilities He'll that I'm sure things for yeah. sure but it's uh, it's not over the top right no yeah um, not like if Nagash showed up he'd just be like okay handshake see you later especially with this because one of Nagash's special rules is he three times the points of your summoning so all of a sudden you know even with the signature spell you're summoning on a casting on a nine 300 points of infantry that's a, that's a full block is, and he gets like eight or nine spells, so he can have all of these if he wants. Yep. Or he can six dice, and he can even eight or nine dice, because he can store dice. Um, the, the, the one where he casts a monster worth 600 points. So he can probably put two or three terror guys on, on the table. I think that would even be better, though, with the, the, uh, the cavalry one. Oh, yeah. Because he summoned cavalry up to 150 points. So, so 450 he, points. That, that's a huge block of guys. Yeah, that's a lot of hex rays running around now. For free, that, that award no victory points. Yeah. That's why I'm saying this lore is cool for fun, fluff stuff. You know, the only fix for this lore that I think would make it perfect for tournament is whatever you summon is worth the victory points if you kill it. Yeah. That, that would completely yeah. change my mind on the whole lore. Uh, maybe some of the tournament organizers just say, okay, ignore that stipulation they're now worth victory points so now you're not just throwing shit out exactly i'd be totally fine with this lore if it was like that yeah yeah so if you make a terror guys yeah you get the benefit of having an extra one but, but you also get the detriment of having that that many points that could you could lose yeah no you know what that might be the fix now i'm not sure why they went without that like, I don't know, but... I think it's just because other summon units in the game, like, uh, the demons can get free stuff, and, oh, that, and they're not it. worth points. Yeah, The yeah. Tomb Kings and Vampire Counts can do the same, and they're yeah, just yeah. not worth points, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so anyways, uh, do you have any other comments? No, just, uh, you know, if it, whatever your guys' opinion are on this lore, you know, let us know in the, the comments below. Yeah, definitely. Um, let us know what you think. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely interested to see what the community thinks about this. Yeah, like, don't take our word for it. Like, we're just a couple bros talking about it. So, it, it be, form your own opinions. Let us know what you think. Yeah, exactly. And uh, hopefully we're going to get started. we got a lot of painting we got to do. We're going to get started on the OnePlus Armors and Agash campaign. And we're trying to recruit different armies to relive or refight the... Uh, yeah, we're going to try to do sort of, I guess, as many of the in-book ones and a couple of our own device yeah. uh, in there. Give us about maybe two, three weeks to get our armies painted up. We really want to make it like a, a showcase thing, so mm -hmm. we're trying really hard to, to build up our armies and make them look nice for you guys. Uh, damn jobs. Damn jobs. Yeah, exactly. All right, thanks, guys. See you next time. Thanks a lot.